poised just six degrees above the equator. The island of Sri Lanka is less than 75,000 square kilometers in size. Windswept coastal plains rise sharply to the central highlands, where the peaks tower 2,000 meters above the Indian Ocean. For such a small country, Sri Lanka has a complicated climate. Unusually, two different monsoons visit this island. Each year they roll in from the sea, trenching the plains with weeks of torrential rain. For the rest of the year, Sri Lanka's lowlands endure months of drought. But in the highlands, water is plentiful all year round. For its size, Sri Lanka has a staggering variety of wildlife. And it's all down to its unique climate. Dry season is fastening its grip on Sri Lanka's lowland plains. Sri Lanka's lowlands cover more than two thirds of the island. And the plains are home to over 2,000 wild elephants. This is one of the biggest populations on Earth and remarkable for such a small island. With the arrival of the dry season, finding enough food is getting more difficult. A fully grown elephant spends up to 16 hours a day grazing. Eating the short, parched grass requires a special technique. It's kicked and twisted from the ground, then shaken to remove any soil. The elephants live in close-knit family groups, under the care of an older female, the matriarch. With many years of knowledge and experience, the matriarch knows where to find food and water in times of shortage. Each year during the dry season, herds from across northeast Sri Lanka make a beeline for a vast lake, known as the Mineria Tank. Some elephants travel hundreds of miles to reach the lake, and family groups come together to form bigger herds. At the peak of the season, as many as 300 gather on Mineria's shores. This lake is key to the survival of the island's elephants. As the water recedes, it reveals fertile ground where fresh grass can grow. Even after weeks without rain, it's possible to find food around the area. The scrub forests surrounding the lake provide shelter from the sun. Sri Lankan elephants are forest dwellers and they've evolved for life in the shade. For most of the year, male elephants lead a solitary existence. But here, they mix together freely. Many of the males are in season and ready to mate. They're pumped full of hormones and grapple with other bulls to assert their dominance. For male elephants, this is a rare opportunity to socialize.
the real pull of Mineria, is a precious commodity during any drought. Water. Water is essential for all animals, but there are few that enjoy bathing as much as elephants. Their trunks can carry up to 10 liters of water, which is useful for showering. Without water, the young in particular are prone to overheating and dehydration. Sri Lankan elephants don't have such huge ears as their African cousins, which are the perfect way to lose body heat. So temperature regulation can be a problem. A dip in the lake quenches thirst and brings cooling relief from the heat. Even at the height of the drought, Mineria retains some water. But this is no ordinary lake. It's an ancient man-made reservoir, built almost 2,000 years ago. Sri Lanka's lowlands were once the center of bygone civilizations, ruled by powerful kings and dynasties. capture the monsoon rains, the kings constructed thousands of reservoirs, known as tanks. This ancient irrigation system provided enough water to last throughout the dry season. Huge rice paddies were planted to feed the growing human population. Sri Lanka's lowlands were transformed. Many of the vast rice paddies have now been reclaimed by the jungle. But the reservoirs still dominate the landscape of the plains. And they govern the lives of the island's wildlife too. Yala lies in a remote corner on Sri Lanka's southeast coast. The landscape is dotted with pools, ponds and reservoirs every one of them carved by human hands centuries ago. These water holes attract a huge variety of birds. Each year, migrants from India and further afield arrive to swell the ranks of permanent residents. Yala is home to over 200 different species. Many of the birds have unique adaptations that allow them to eat specific types of food. Open bill storks feed almost exclusively on freshwater snails. Their distinctive open bill is the perfect tool for the job. The gap between the upper and lower mandibles allows the stalk to use its bill like a pair of pincers. It can delicately extract the soft meat without having to break the snail's shell. It uses its foot to hold the plant above the water while selecting the parts it wants to eat.
Yala's ancient reservoirs are not just a lifeline for the birds that live here. A year-round supply of water makes it a haven for big herbivores, like water buffaloes, wild boar, and elephants. Each morning, large herds of spotted deer gather around Yala's water holes to drink. Like all of Sri Lanka's deer, only the males have antlers. These are shed and regrown each year. The deer have glands on their faces and feet, which release scent. Stags mark their territory by leaving their scent on grasses and trees, and by making scrapes in the ground. As for most herbivores, the dry season is a difficult time for spotted deer. To survive for months without rain, many plants stop growing to conserve water, and some lose their leaves altogether. With less vegetation available, the deer must travel further in search of food. But Yala's ancient reservoirs ensure that a lack of water is rarely a problem. This allows the deer to survive in unusually high numbers here, even at the height of the drought, making Yala the ideal habitat for a deadly predator. Over 40 Sri Lankan leopards stalk the park. This is one of the highest concentrations of leopards in the world, with up to one leopard every square kilometer. The spotted deer are their main prey. But the deer stay close to a useful ally. Keeping a lookout in the trees, grey langurs raise the alarm. Like most cats, leopards hunt by stealth, getting as close as possible to their target before launching a killer charge. Given the chance, the leopard will hunt the langurs too, though these agile monkeys make a difficult prey. In Sri Lanka, leopards hold an unchallenged position at the top of the food chain. Their isolation on this island has led to their becoming a distinct subspecies. There are no lions or tigers on the island, and so Sri Lanka's leopards have grown particularly big. Fully grown males can weigh up to 80 kilograms. They're the biggest leopards in the world. Because of their size and status as the top predator, Sri Lanka's leopards are remarkably confident. Elsewhere, it's unusual to see a leopard out in the open in broad daylight. But even in Yala, mothers with young cubs are much more cautious. It's extremely rare to see them. Hidden deep within the thick scrub is her kill from last night, the carcass of a grey langur.
for some animals, the arrival of the dry season heralds a time of plenty. As Yala's waterholes begin to shrink, fish and amphibians are trapped within ever smaller pools. There are fewer places to hide, and there's no escaping the watchful gaze of a purple heron. With plenty of food available, this is a good time of year to start a family. For many animals, June brings the mating season. When white-throated kingfishers are caught in, they share gifts of food. But this male seems reluctant to hand over the frog he's caught. Eventually, the female simply catches her own. There are bigger predators fishing in Yala's waterholes. Mugger crocodiles cruise the pools making the most of the bounty of fish now trapped within their confines. Nowhere else in the Indian subcontinent supports these huge reptiles in such great numbers as the tiny island of Sri Lanka. The crocodiles eat mainly fish, but larger males will also prey on animals they can seize from the water's edge. The muggers are unlikely to attack one of the biggest mammals on Earth. Although a water buffalo and her calf remain on the alert. But by late morning, the crocodiles are no longer interested in food. For them too, June is the start of the mating season. Confined within small pools, the muggers are forced to become much more sociable. Males compete for dominance by thrashing the surface of the water. Having trounced his rivals, the victor wins access to a female. Bee-eaters nest during the dry season, so there's no risk of the burrow being flooded by rainwater. As their name suggests, bee-eaters specialize in catching bees. Each pair shares a favorite perch from which they go hunting. Before eating the bee, the bird removes the sting and wipes off the venom. These birds are prolific hunters, sometimes catching several hundred insects a day. The ancient reservoirs are not the only legacy of Sri Lanka's human history that continues to provide a safe haven for wildlife. Lying in the northeastern lowlands, ruins are all that remain of the city of Polonarua.
in its glory days, Polonarua saw the rise and fall of human dynasties. Nowadays, this ancient city is overrun by monkeys. Hundreds of top macaques battle for territory amongst the ruins. The macaques live in big groups of up to 40 animals. They follow a strict hierarchy under the leadership of an alpha male. Each macaque has a distinct personality and hairstyle. Females have colorful red faces. The troop relies on the knowledge of older females to lead them to food. In this case, a flowering tree Macaques can eat virtually anything. But during the dry season, good food gets harder to find. Dead leaves may hide insects, tree nuts and fallen fruit. Lower ranking monkeys must wait for those of higher status to eat first. Top macaques have cheek pouches, which contain a special enzyme to help them digest food. The pouches are also a good place to hide food from rivals. Even this doesn't always prevent a high-ranking monkey from trying to steal their entitlement. If the monkey of lower status resists too strongly, she'll be reprimanded. After eating, young males engage in boisterous bouts at play, oblivious to their auspicious surroundings. Once fully grown, these youngsters will have to leave the group and go it alone. Good fighting skills may one day mean the difference between life and death. For top macaques, the greatest threat comes from other top macaques. Fully grown males are twice as big as females and have huge canine teeth. For males, the hierarchy controls not just access to food, but also access to mates. The alpha male has fathered most of the youngsters in this troop. In top macaque society, it pays to make friends rather than enemies. The monkeys are left to roam the ruins of Polonarua, even though it's one of Sri Lanka's most important Buddhist monuments.
the Bodhi tree is sacred in Buddhist belief. And these trees are grown in many of the island's temples. Flames lit as offerings attract insects to the tree, which in turn attracts small reptiles. This brings bigger hunters. Sri Lanka has one of the highest incidences of death by snake bite of any country on earth. A bite from this spectacled cobra can kill within minutes. But because Buddhism teaches respect for all living creatures, poisonous snakes aren't just tolerated, they're actually respected by many Sri Lankans. No animal is as intimately connected to the history and culture of Sri Lanka as the elephant. Centuries ago, these huge mammals were used to build the foundations of great cities and to carve out their reservoirs. To this day, elephants still play an important role in island life. Few Buddhist festivals are complete without a retinue of elephants. For religious ceremonies, it's important the elephants have tusks. In Sri Lanka, less than 10% of male elephants are tuskers. So temple elephants are usually imported from elsewhere in Asia. A wild Sri Lankan tusker is a rare sight. In the south of the island, the hills rise out of the plains to form Sri Lanka's mountainous heart. The peaks are shrouded in a swiftly moving blanket of cloud. The lichens, mosses and ferns that cloak every tree act like sponges. In a process known as fog stripping, they absorb moisture from the clouds. Gradually, this is released into the many waterways that crisscross the highlands. Three major rivers have their origins here, delivering precious water down to the arid plains. Just like the ancient reservoirs, Sri Lanka's cold heart plays its part in sustaining the whole island through periods of drought. The constant supply of water means that the central highlands can support an astonishing variety of different animals. Many are found nowhere else on Earth. These forests shelter a rare primate that's found only in Sri Lanka, the purple-faced langur. There are purple-faced langurs in the lowlands too, but those in the highlands are a distinct subspecies. They're specially adapted to deal with the extreme weather. Their thick, shaggy coats have earned them the nickname the Bear Monkey. Langurs are leaf eaters and they spend a lot of time feeding.
Leaves are selected with care and often with considerable effort. Younger leaves contain more protein and are easier to digest. It may be 30 degrees Celsius down on the plains, but up here, the nighttime temperatures can fall below zero. The herds of samba deer that graze the windswept plateau have thick fur to protect them from the cold. They're the only species of deer on the island that can survive the cold conditions of the central highlands. Though they live in the heart of a tropical island, the animals in the highlands have had to adapt to the cold. Even in the undergrowth, the cloud forest harbors many unique animals and plants. Half the reptiles that live here are found nowhere else. At less than 10 centimeters long, the Sri Lankan pygmy lizard lives up to its name. These tiny lizards are also well adapted to cope with the cold. Eggs are hatched inside the body of the parent to protect them from the temperatures outside. Unlike almost all other reptiles, the Sri Lankan pygmy lizard gives birth to live young. The highlands may be cold, but the constant supply of water drives diversity, just like in a tropical rainforest. The male rhino horned lizard bears a horn on its nose that can grow almost half an inch long. The exact purpose of this strange growth remains a mystery. The female rhino horned lizard also has a horn, but it's considerably smaller. Sri Lanka's highlands remain relatively unexplored. Little is known about some of the unusual animals that live here. Out on the plateau, even within one small rhododendron bush, there's a unique community of animals that are found nowhere else. Its flowers provide sanctuary for a black-cheeked lizard. as a rival male. Black-cheeked lizards are fiercely territorial. Head nodding serves as a warning to stay away. The Ceylon white eye is a common sight in the rhododendrons. But like so many of the animals here, these birds are only found in the highlands. Each time the white eye dips its head to feed on nectar, it collects a fine coat of pollen. The bird transfers this pollen from plant to plant and may well play a part in helping the rhododendrons to reproduce. If so, it's helping to preserve yet another unique species. The rhododendron is itself a subspecies that only grows in the highlands. By late September, the drought in the lowlands is reaching its peak. 
It's almost eight months since the last rain fell in Yala. At this time of year, a good sunscreen is more important than ever. Applying a layer of dust helps protect against the sun and rids the skin of any parasites. The water in the ancient reservoirs is greatly reduced. The fish are easy to catch, but there's lots of competition. And it's not just from the other birds. The storks startle fish straight into the crocodile's jaws. This may be why the storks can hunt so close to this huge predator without fear. In the sweltering heat, spotted deer seek out the small pools of water that remain in Yala's rocky outcrops. These tiny oases were formed from rainwater during the last monsoon. Some are deep enough to persist throughout the year. The deer are nervous, and with good reason. These outcrops are the daytime haunts of Yala's top predator. The rocks provide a cool sanctuary in the heat of the day and a high vantage point to observe the comings and goings of their prey. As the sun begins to set, Yala's leopards start to stir. It's at night that they do most of their hunting. During the night, the leopard has made a kill. Weakened by the drought, many spotted deer perish at this time of year. But relief is in sight. In October, the prevailing wind changes direction. The winds collect moist air from the Indian Ocean and drive it towards Sri Lanka's lowlands. The monsoon has finally arrived. Within days, the plains are awash. Over the next four months, parts of the lowlands will receive nearly 200 centimeters of rain. Every precious drop is captured in Sri Lanka's ancient man-made reservoirs. The rain brings new growth and abundant food for the lowland herbivores. In the ancient city of Polonarua, the forest is transformed. The tok macaques easily adjust to their new environment. 
for most of the year, plants and fruits form their staple diet. But the more experienced monkeys have learned that the flush of new vegetation brings an annual protein-rich feast. Caterpillars. For centuries, all life on Sri Lanka has centered on one precious resource, water. Bygone civilizations built a network of ancient reservoirs that capture the monsoon rains and sustain the lowlands through months of drought. In the island's cold, mountainous heart, there's plenty of water all year round. And the highlands are home to an extraordinary number of animals that are found nowhere else. The complicated climate of this tiny island is what makes Sri Lanka one of the most species-rich places on Earth.